Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast in another virtual online one. Today, we have Mr. Alex Kirsten. Hello, Alex. Hello, how are you? Not bad, not bad. Can you sort of introduce yourself and say <clears throat> who you are, what you do? Yeah, so my name is Alex Kirsten. I'm head of video for Car Throttle. So that effectively means that I'm in all of the Car Throttle videos. I script, I help editing, coming up with ideas, and I liaise with Jack, Ethan, now Annie, who's joined the team. And uh, yeah, we try to produce as many awesome videos as possible. So I've been at Car Throttle for just under eight years now, I and mean, a lot's changed. Eight years, wow. I know, man, it's a lifetime. It is. It's funny. I was looking at some pictures yesterday. It was I took a picture with Tim like a long time ago, and someone pointed out it was like it was literally like eight years ago or something. Like fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's mad, isn't it? It's, it's mad. mad. And look, look at my wrinkles as well. They've become really prominent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just have to film in like seven twenty p or something. And then you're all good. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about that. <laughs> so, what did you do before car throttle? Before car throttle, my job was working at Auto Car Magazine. Ah. So I did a master's in automotive journalism, just to rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Master's in automotive journalism at Coventry University. And then as part of the one year master's, we had a month free to go and do some work experience yeah. because Autocar is affiliated with Coventry University through Steve Cropley. It's pretty much mandatory that you do a week at Autocar. Did a week at Autocar, also did three weeks at three different magazines, BMW and Practical Performance Car. Yeah. And loved those. Mm. Was really bored at Autocar. Wasn't my scene. Anyway, fast forward about six months. I'm working at Autocar. <laughs> Life's great. <laughs> no, what happened is I did my um did my dissertation half written, half video. Uh, did a kind of review of my E30 at the time. And then I decided it'd be a good idea to burn it onto a CD and then literally walk around the whole of the autocar office and put a CD, plonk a CD on everyone's desk. So nice. I did that to, I think, five or six people. And then I got a call from the then editor, Chaz Hallett, who said, yeah, do you want to come in? I want to have a chat. At the time, I was thinking, ah, don't really want to work at autocar. Never read autocar, <laughs> but it would be really stupid of me and remiss not to go for an interview and to get a job because if you get a job there then you've pretty much got a foot through the door yeah you made industry. it it's one of the big big names yeah so yeah worked worked for autocar for two years and yeah i learned a lot and i met a lot of people as well so it was it was really good for my career not where i wanted to be though yeah it wasn't a forever home for me so yeah and then i met adnan who was the then ceo still the founder. Yeah. We met at a launch, a Say At Me launch, I think it was. And he told me about this website no one had ever heard of. <laughs> and did I want to work for him? That was a few months later. And yeah, I did. So. And then fast forward. Fast when forward, you, yeah. Can we wind back a little bit? When you're also car, what sort of thing were you doing? <clears throat> what were you tasked with? So there's a journalist called Hilton Holloway. I, I really liked him, got on with him very well. He called me chief bitch <laughs> and that pretty much was my job. I would scout the whole internet and try and find new stories of updates of a Citroen cactus or whatever. I don't think the cactus was been a thing back then, but you know, yeah. the new DS3 has, you know, been upgraded with X, Y, Z. You can get this option, that option, blah, blah, blah. It was all little news stories that no one really cared about. All very, very formulaic. So I did that. I spent most of my time being a news reporter for the website. Occasionally got into the magazine if I were to do an update piece on my Kia Picanto long-termer, <laughs> uh, which was great. And I used to just go through all the copy from the journalists as well you know the higher the more yeah. senior journalists they just write whatever they thought just blurt it out there were always loads of mistakes and then it was up to me to uh correct grammar because because they're so high up they just don't give a shit about writing incorrectly which is fair enough i'd love to get to that <laughs> point at some point yeah that, that was my job really uh cool. good good learning curve yeah yeah did you get to like drive some interesting stuff in that time or yeah so i was bottom of the pecking order so yeah. i used to go on occasional launches really nothing particularly notable 
it was it was the stuff that other people didn't really want to do, which is fair enough. You know, you've got to start somewhere. So I think yeah, I was so you were driving 24, 25. Yeah, Porsches just, and Lamborghinis and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the only time I got to drive nice cars is when they were in the office and used to be able to like take home a car for an evening or for a okay. weekend. And yeah. sometimes you'd get really cool cars. Um, I got an RS5 once, curb the alloy. That was really awkward. <laughs> and yeah, j- just general stuff really that just got, you know, swapped around. And it was really cool. Someone at the end of the day would come, come around with like a register with a rotor and say, right, Alex, you've not had a go in the RS3. Do you want to have a go at that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, please. So <laughs> that's how I got to drive cool cars. Nice. Nice. So then you met Adnan. What yeah. was he doing before then? Adnan was at uni. He was still... He's just like, I'm going to start this website. Yeah, so he started Car Throttle from his uni bedroom. He studied... Uh, uh, testing me. Economics? Something like that. Something to do with money. So mm. he could have gone in to a bank, been a banker, and made a shitload of money, but he decided he wanted to follow his own path and start Car Throttle. And yeah, like you said, we met, he was doing car throttle kind of pretty much on the side. I don't think it was full time at that point. Still, you know, running out of his, running the website out of his um, bedroom. And then, uh, and then I joined and then we went, we actually got an office and then we went all serious. Yeah. So was that, was it just the two of you at the start or was it a bigger team? Uh, It was the three of us. So Ethan's always been there. He was... Hi him, yeah. Hi Ethan, go, f- go fuck yourself. Um, you like swears? <laughs> you can swear if you want. Okay, Ethan, go fuck yourself. Seriously, um, he was he was still at uni at Kingston Uni studying videography, hmm. and yeah, he met Adnan through Ethan's brother, and then he was just going on some shoots with Adnan really, and yeah, he was a very shy boy at the time. Look at him now; he's a dad and married and everything. <laughs> but yeah, the three of us kind of grew it for the first couple of years really and then we were joined by Matt Robinson who's still the editor of the website and just a bunch of other people we were we were a very small lean team for the first mm. I don't know three four years maybe up to seven of us yeah it's I've, it's funny I was my girlfriend asked who I was interviewing this evening and I was like obviously Alex from Carthron it's like who the fuck is Alex I'm like okay well you don't follow cars or whatever and I tried to sort of surmise car throttle and I was like I, I was like it's kind of like all of the memes that everyone makes but they make the videos <laughs> of those memes I was like does that sound right and then I said it's actually one of the very few automotive media <coughs> outlets that I actually I would say I probably watch a lot of your videos where I don't watch many others bullshit <laughs> I'm, I'm calling you out what's the last video that you watched um I've watched oh. a, a lot of your series on making a car faster i can't exactly remember off the top of my head where you've like upgraded the brakes done a set of lap times fair fair, yeah um all right i have watched some of your videos <laughs> oh well it went from a lot of videos to some of your videos That's yeah, fine. No, <laughs> as a, of, of, of the bunch of youtube type people to be fair i don't, I don't up. thank you very much i appreciate that to be fair i don't watch a lot of car youtube stuff i don't think i'd watch myself if i wasn't in it do you reason- watch yourself even though you are in it? Well, I have to because I have to go through it with a fine tooth comb and make sure everything's mm. all right. And then you put it on the telly at the end. Sorry? Then you put it on the telly at the end. Oh, Just yeah. like, yep, that's me. It's- Sometimes I do when I'm really proud and I want my girlfriend <laughs> to see, uh, then I'll put it on the TV. Um, what's your? What's the video you're most proud of? Oh, good question. Video I'm most proud of. I don't, um, I don't know if most proud is the right way to think of it. But the video that I think I enjoyed most okay. was, there, there's a couple and they involve a friend of mine, Gareth. Mm-hmm. One of which was installing an engine on my driveway. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was Phil, my MX-5. And that was, you know, height of summer. And it was just two mates tearing an engine out, putting an engine in, in the garden, messing around with a paddling pool. It was just, it was just a laugh. And another video that I really, really enjoyed was making a slow car faster for free, which was, we had a, oh God, what was it called? Space Star, Mitsubishi Space Star. Right. Bought, bought it for like 100 quid or so from Exeter, Devon. And then we completely stripped it. We gutted it, you know, got 
300, 400 kilos out of the car and then we just ragged it around the racetrack. And it was it was literally a skeleton of a car. We even took yeah. the roof off everything. And it was just so fun because it was just so sketchy and I was with my friend and yeah, I, I just love those things. Also off-roading just normal cars and yeah. braking cars. I'm very good at braking cars. <laughs> so just anything where there's no rules really and it's not formulaic at all. That's, that's what I really enjoy. Yeah. In the, in the early days, did you do... Do you do much like manufacturer stuff now where they lend you a car anymore? I don't know. In the in the early days, yeah, because we were still finding our feet and we were still trying to get a bit more serious and get a bit more respect in the industry. Because when I mm. joined, everyone was like, what are you doing? This is career suicide. It's another blog that's going to fail. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we had to be on the on the good side of manufacturers really. And luckily, because I'd worked with a lot of them through Autocar, they were like, "Oh yeah, okay, Alex, you can you can borrow a car." So they they gave us a chance. Hmm. So yeah, we were trying to do straight ish reviews of cars, and then we quickly yeah. realised we don't give a shit about these reviews. <laughs> no one else gives a shit. You know, let let all the big players do that. Let Autocar, Auto Express, you know, do the formulaic stuff, and we'll just find our own path. So. Yeah, we were doing s- reviews, but it kind of in our own style. Yeah. And then that kind of morphed into more kind of vloggy, personality-led stuff, which is where we're at these days. Yeah, what's your, how, do you, how do you brainstorm for ideas now? Because you put out loads, quite a lot of content. What, what sort of rate do you put out content at the moment? <clears throat> uh, we're two videos a week, and that's a very recent thing. So Fridays yeah. is our holy grail you know we'll always upload on that day yeah and then wednesdays is a new day that we're uploading so they're more kind of animation led or list based voiceover type stuff Mm. it's just a way just to just to get more videos out really especially now that everyone's locked down and everyone's bored out their skull i think it's important that you know as content creators we try and keep people entertained really because i sit on the sofa twiddling my thumbs in terms of Content ideation, it's usually Ethan, Jack and I will just have a think and say, this idea is getting a bit boring. We need to switch it up, really. What can we do? And that's pretty much why we started Cheap Car Challenges, I think, last summer. It was actually Jack's idea. He said, why don't we buy a car for as cheap as possible and then just go on an adventure? We did that, bought a Volvo for 195 quid. (laughs) <laughs> uh, and then uh, and then got two videos out of that and you know that's yeah. on you know combined two or three million views and then we, just, we were just like oh can we get a cheap car that's a sports car can we cheap car challenge xyz and you know for us that's 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 what we're really focused at what ideally what we want to do is just create relatable content stuff that anyone can watch and think holy shit i've also got two friends they like cars we've got a hundred pounds between us, we can do exactly the same thing. Yeah. I just, you know, I just want to inspire people just to go out and have fun with cars because, you know, the YouTubers that I follow or that I see, they build big horsepower cars or they buy, you know, 10 supercars or stuff. That's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting for some, but for me, no interest whatsoever because it's completely unattainable. Yeah. Um, I want to see a guy buying a shit box and having fun with it for two weeks because I can do it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I think when you changed, when you transitioned to doing... Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a completely different oh, podcast now. When I transitioned... <laughs> I'm not taking you down that route. I'm not taking you down that route. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you started doing the cheap car stuff, I remember looking and being like, oh my God, this is the best shit ever. Because as you said, like everybody talks about it with their <clears> mates. <throat> everybody. Whether, whether you've got like whatever cars, you always go like, I'd love to buy a car for like 50 quid and just see how far we can drive it till it falls apart or, you know, whatever, get some stuff together. How, how can you make it quick? Do that sort of thing. And everyone gets a buzz out of it. And like, I've loved, I loved it when you're like, okay, we've taken the car, we'll take it to the dyno and we find out how it's got like 50% of the horsepower it left the factory with. Then we fuck with it, take it back, make a stupid video about it, send it around a track. Try yeah. not crash it. Yeah, it's just, it's it's thoroughly entertaining. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, I mean that that's what I like live for, man. I've I've always, you know, followed the mantra: don't live above your means. Mm. And I will never buy a car that will cost me more than ten grand 
like saying that now, you know, if I win the lottery, then maybe I'll buy my dream yeah, car, yeah. whatever. But cars should be recycled. They should be enjoyed. Older cars have so much personality and so much charm. And, you know, new cars are, for me, a lot like white goods. You know, everyone rolls around in a BMW M140 or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, no one's got an E36 M3 these days, quite rightly, because they're shit, because I had one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just, just finding old cars and just showing them to be more than shelf life goods really like mm. people think oh i've got a hundred thousand miles on my car i need to swap it it's like no give it a service give it a clean just keep it going our audi a4 with five hundred and forty thousand miles is testament to that original clutch as well on that wow granted it's on its way out very very <laughs> on its way out but it's, it's just proof that you look after cars and they'll look after you and that's that's just the sentiment that i want to get across like buying a car doesn't have to be expensive, but you, it can be so much fun if you yeah. just think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, an example of you guys thinking outside the box, I was just looking at some videos that you've done. Can you daily a stretch limo? I didn't actually watch the video, but I see, I'm guessing you bought a stretch limo and then just rocked around in it for a uh, while. No, that was that was our Living With series. Uh, that wasn't us buying a limo. It was me contacting a lim- limo company, I think, in ah, Essex okay. and yeah, saying, yeah. can we make a video on it? Can I drive it? It's like, no, no. It's like, please, we do have, you know, over 2 million subscribers. Oh, okay, all right, well, let's let's try it out. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, exactly. Uh, can you daily drive a Hummer was another very popular one. That's over 3 oh, yeah. million views. Can you dr- daily drive a 90-mile-an-hour sofa with Ed China? That's, oh, yeah. That's, that's also one of my favorite videos. He's he's the nicest person in the industry, hands down. He's he's great, very accommodating and so knowledgeable. That sofa's mad. It's it's really really sketchy. Um I don't get scared a lot. I like, you know, for me the more sketchy the better, but doing 70 miles an hour on a dual carriageway on a sofa is <laughs> has been one of the sketchiest things I've done, I think, in my career. Cuz you know if if you have to slam on anchors, it goes that way. And then yeah. the rollover bar is your head. Like there's no <laughs> getting away from that. If you crash in that, you are, you're toast. You're absolute toast. But um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a genius contraption. Does he have the it? shed as well? Did I see you? Uh, no, that's another guy called Kevin Nix. Right. Uh, he built, yeah, effectively a shed. He made his own kind of space frame out of steel. He had a, he had a broken car on his driveway and he thought, hey, uh, I'm going to try and make something fun. So he, yeah, it's now got a 4.2 litre, Audi V8 sounds awesome and it's super comfortable and you can daily drive a shed. That's mad. Yeah. It, that, finding out that these sorts of people exist that make this stuff, is just so amazing. And like everyone has their own niche. And I was talking to um, Johnny Smith. I had him yeah, on the yeah, podcast yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah, we've and, had um, a few chats. We were talking about just how like YouTube has basically enabled all of these weird niches that everyone well, not everyone, but there's there's a significant amount of people out there that you can build a shed and there might be 100,000 people that also want to build a shed on wheels. Like the internet has made all of these weird, quirky things not that weird anymore because there's so many people. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. The, the bar is set very high of, in, t- in terms of what's weird these days, isn't it? Yeah. When you started doing the cheap, the sort of like cheap car videos, did you... At the beginning, were you like, oh, this is totally going to work? Or were you surprised at the reception? Um, I I was confident that it would it would be a hit, to be honest, because 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 like I said, it's so relatable and it yeah. just it it struck a chord with me. And you know, I like to think that I am our audience. You know, I don't spend a lot of money on cars. I have multiple cars, not that much space, and I just want to have fun. So. Yeah. Yeah, if, if I like it, usually I think our audience will like it. Uh, so, yeah, I was I was confident. And also it's just three mates, you know, just buying a shit car and having fun. You know, who, who doesn't like that? Like, Yeah, exactly. And, like, worst case scenario, it's not going to cost you very much to make the video do that. Do you, do you find yourself travelling a lot or not so much? <clears throat> well, at the moment, I've been travelling from my bedroom to the <laughs> office to downstairs no do we travel a lot not not a great deal we go to america a few times a year sometimes yeah last year don't think we went 
maybe once. But we travel a lot around the UK, I suppose. Yeah. But you know, maybe maybe once or twice a week we'll travel to you know parts of the UK <laughs> that are a bit yeah. further afield. But I wouldn't say I'm a I'm I'm a big traveller. But you know, I'll I'll leave my house at seven a.m. and then I'll get back at ten p.m. and mm. probably six or seven hours of that is travel. But for me, if you if you're in the UK, it doesn't really feel like travel. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just popping somewhere to <laughs> exactly. then come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the my follower people <laughs> wondered if you had a favourite road in the UK. Favourite road in the UK or um, your region for driving? Yes, I do. I forgot what it's called, but what country? This country. Oh, right. I thought you meant in the UK. Yeah, I said um, UK, so it could be England, Wales, Scotland. All right, Mr. Geography. <laughs> um, oh, so there's a road, I can find out for you. There's a road where we did our Alfa Romeo 147 GTA review. Mm. And that stretch of road is absolutely incredible. Do you want me to find out? Ethan will know. I can text him. Go on, text him and then we'll... we'll- well, if it comes back up before we've before right. we've finished, all right, then uh, then we can whack it back in, please. Right, ten. So you must have done some pretty hilarious road trips now in silly vehicles. Yeah, you've got any stand out? I saw I saw you made a Ute recently. Yeah, that, um, that looked amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still outside my house, and I still need to send off to the DVLA to tell them here it is please, can you make this road legal? Because apparently it's quite easy. Because structurally, actually, no, we have changed a lot structurally, but we haven't changed engine or suspension or anything. So yeah. I think it's literally just a form that I need to send off with some pictures, road legal, and then we'll... Cause it, but it doesn't get to stay as the car it no, was I mean, before. No, I that, mean, that's all in the bin now. Uh, we took we took massive <laughs> power tools to that. Um, in terms of road trips, yeah, I mean, been to the Nürburgring a few times in my MX-5, twice, um, once mm. it broke down. And more recently... What did you think the first time you went to the Nürburgring? I thought it's amazing. It's, yeah, for me, it's probably the favourite, my favourite thing I do every year, which is going to Nürburgring 24 hours. Mm. Oh, yeah. I've only been once, but I haven't managed ah, to restate Have you been to it. Le Mans 24? What do you think of that? Yes. It's good. But I, I got ruined. I got like, it got ruined for me the that? first time I went. So I got invited by a friend. And we went like full, full, full mega VIP. Um, so we like landed, came in by helicopter or whatever, all this sort of stuff. And I was like, okay, I basically can't go back again because. Fair, fair. <laughs> so I. I've been oh, to Le Mans Classic. Nice. I really enjoyed yeah, Le Mans yeah. Classic. That is um, yeah, yeah, cool definitely. old car. So I've done Nürburgring 24 three or four times and Le Mans, I think once mm. or twice. Le Mans for me is, is just, mm. it's not where it's at. I think Le Mans is a place that you go to be seen and Nürburgring is the place you go if you're really a petrol head. Because you, yeah. you just have a look at the cars that people drive at Nürburgring and you traipse through forests and everyone's just getting pissed and listening to awesome German techno music. And <laughs> it's, it's just a completely different vibe. Like every, everyone I just find at Le Mans is just a little bit, you know, nose up and yeah, they're, they're yeah, not really yeah. my type of people. I like I like to rough it a lot more. Yeah the the no the no but the N twenty four sounds it just is like you said people yeah. are there just partying yeah. like yeah. proper partying and there's some racing and then of the racing there's also like hilarious cars going around like there's the badass ones but then there's yeah. also not so yeah, badass yeah. Calibra ones going and the old uh, Vauxhall so Calibra full spectrum. Opal Calibra cruises around and yeah it's just yeah. it's just such a good mix and such a eclectic bunch of people who are there just for the racing and just for getting pissed and having a good time it's like Mm. it's Glastonbury and it's the best race in the world and it happens every year and it's so awesome it's when you compare it to like any other track racing it's it's just it's just not the same like it's just a different category like like the Isle of Man TT I guess for cars almost Obviously, you can do the Ironman TT in a car, yeah. but it's not quite the same. Just yeah. mad, mad people. Oh, I watched a, a video of yours today, and I didn't. This was one of your like video talking over yeah. graphics ones, and actually, I was quite impressed with the graphics. Who um, maybe does Ethan the graphics? Does the graphics? 
Yeah, yeah, no, he's really good at um, animations and stuff. Um, we also have um, our social team. Um, a guy called Edwin mm. does a lot of graphics as well, so he's very good. Yeah, I think it's, um, I don't know. Yeah, Ethan and Edwin, I'd say, are pretty top-notch when it comes to animations. Yeah. The one I watched was the difference between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Now, this is something that I didn't realise that I wasn't 100% sure on the yeah. difference between the two. No, there is a difference. Don't ask me what the difference like, is, because is we, difference. I think we put this video out a couple of years ago, or maybe longer, so I have no clue anymore. Oh, go oh, on, f- have a guess fuck. then. You should know. I feel like I should know, so I feel like you oh, should know. God. Go I, oh, God. Jesus. All-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive. Uh, has it got something to do with plates, viscous plates and... Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think all-wheel drive, basically, is always all four wheels are driving and there's like a yeah. torque differential in the middle that you can change or whatever. And then four-wheel drive is generally two-wheel drive, but you can lock Oh, four. okay. That's well, if it says it in the video, say. then I would have done the research at the time, but now uh, I have no clue. But I also feel like if you say, you know, a Land Rover Defender... They're front-wheel drive, yeah, yeah. They're front-wheel drive. You'd call that they're front-wheel drive, four-wheel yeah. drive. Yeah, and I think you can drive in... <laughs> One of the things is like if it's four wheel drive and you leave it in four wheel drive, you end up with weird like diff. Oh, if you lock the diff, whether you, yeah. So there's obviously four wheel drive and then four wheel drive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you lock all the diffs, have you ever driven a car like a Land Rover Defender on the road with locked diffs? And have you ever tried to turn a corner? It's the sketchiest thing ever. (laughs) Also very very bad for the diffs, but it's okay. It was in my auto car days. I didn't know any better. Tried to take a corner. (laughs) <laughs> with all the diffs locked and nearly just ploughed into another car that was parked at T-junction. Really bad idea. Don't do it. So I guess you just like basically just like massively understeer because the yeah, wheels don't Yeah, it was just properly. fucked. It was terrible. It felt like everything was broken and the world was ending. <laughs> I've driven a a car, like a drift car yes, with a welded diff. very cool. They're fun. That's equally a bit odd. I think the first time I parked up, the guy next to me was like, just put it, just like turn the wheels full to oh. the right. And then, just, and then just leave it and it'll like roll back. And it basically, yeah. because the diff lock. bunny hop into the spot. It can't go around the corner. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it starts doing that. Have you guys built a drift car? We have not built a drift car. Reason being, drifting's never really hit the mark with our audience. Mm. Uh, despite there being thousands of hours worth of drift footage on YouTube. But for us, whenever we've done anything drift related... It's people don't really care that much. Um, it's it surprised me, yeah. but you know that's not to say that we won't build a budget drift car at some point because it's one of the things that we haven't done. We've done two or three track cars. We've done an off roader out of a Jaguar X Type. Yeah. What, what else have we done? Yeah, the Ute, and we've done other stupid stuff as well. Drift car could be fun, but you build a drift car, then where do you go to drift it? Yeah. It's expensive to hire a track and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, we do everything on a, on, you know, strict a budget as possible. We've never had a big budget to shoot a video. Yeah. And I think that's maybe part of the charm of the car throttle videos because everything is done on a shoestring. Yeah. And it comes back to that relatable thing. Um, I, I've found, yeah. and I'm sure you found like, it's, no one cares about most sport content. Like if you shoot like a racing anything, basically people don't nah. care. Like no. there are some people you that have, love it, but yeah, unless you have that very niche audience, which is why a channel like WTF One is doing so well. Yeah, because it's it, it's kind of personality led, and you know, it's also lots of knowledge and animations and stuff. But you have to be that kind of niche follower. Yeah, me as a car enthusiast, I don't you know watch much of. WTF one. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I know they don't watch any car throttles, so hey, well, basically, that's everyone, life. Everyone's agreed that no one watches any other, any, anyone else's <laughs> exactly. content. Exactly. Like, everyone's yeah, just, yeah. We only watch our own content. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> I only listen to, nowadays, my own podcast. Actually, that's a lie. Because editing them <laughs> takes so damn long that you don't have any time to do anything else. Oh, man. But, um, Jeez, that sucks. That's all right. It's quite good fun. It's quite interesting listening back to the, your conversations with people again. Like, I don't know why yeah. that is interesting, but for some reason it is interesting second time around. Well, I'm sure there's loads of nuggets that you've forgotten about. That's something that always strikes me. Some, sometimes we'll come away from a video shoot and I'll think, shit, I don't think we've got a video. But you go through the footage and you're like, holy shit, we did that, we did that, <laughs> we did that. This is going to be a really cool video. Yeah. Do you film like a lot as in if you were going out to film a video, do you film like from the start of the day, just boom, 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 or you're like, I want to film this specific thing? 
No, well, yeah, we'll we'll do it pretty specifically. Mm. Really, we won't usually overshoot. What what we tend to do is nothing's ever scripted because I've tried scripting and it's bullshit. Yeah. It sounds fake and it's not me. So what we'll do is we'll just have an idea of what we want to achieve. If it's more of a kind of formulaic video, yeah, it, it, like a car challenge, for example, you you don't know what car you're going to buy, you don't know how much it's going to cost, but you have an idea of where you want to go with it. You know, if you want to drive to West Wittering Beach, for example, which is what we did with Volvo, then that's you know you've got to do two things in that day: buy a car, go to the beach, and that's pretty much our script. Yeah. So I've completely lost my train of thought. What was the question? I can't remember to be honest. I've lost it as well. Uh, I was reading other questions. Uh, oh, filming. Sorry, filming. Yes, filming. filming. Um, oh, so we will we will film everything that we think is interesting. So if we're driving and we're like, ah, I w- I've got something funny to say or something, we'll just hit record and then we'll just stop record. But And yeah, usually if something weird happens, we usually get very lucky in, in that we manage to get it on film. Um, What's well, something yeah, we're, pretty we're, weird that you've caught on film? Or like just freak something. stuff that's happened or you've seen? A couple of weeks ago, no, uh, probably about a month ago now, actually, driving around a roundabout and a, and a tractor with like a whole trailer full of hay was coming around a roundabout and just collapsed oh, wow. on the roundabout. We were like, holy shit, that's amazing. And it didn't make any noise because hay smashing yeah. onto concrete is just silent. But it's, yeah, it's very interesting to watch. That's mad. Poor, I was, poor guy there, um, poor guy. Driving down to the Channel Tunnel once, it was last year, I think. And there's a point, I think you're on the A, was it 22 or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you go over this big like motorway bridge and there was a lorry in front of me. It was in the left lane and it got hit by a gust of wind as we were going over this bridge and it went up to like 45 degrees. It must have gone up to the point where Jesus. there was, if it had gone up half a degree more, it was not coming back and it would have rolled off the bridge onto the motorway. And I'm just behind it like, right. Ah! <laughs> and then he goes somehow like it came back down again you're like bloody hell yeah yeah Are you su- that's yeah that could have gone very wrong I've just had a, a brainwave completely unrelated to your question <laughs> but do you know what we were doing I think four years ago ah so where is it yeah well I think so were we on where an autobahn it? or were we on a road trip we were well we weren't quite on the autobahn yet but yeah four years ago we were on Gumball 3000 weren't we yeah and that's that's one of my fondest memories of the autobahn because you were in your in my 997 GT Gen 2 GT3 RS GT3 RS and I was in Adnan's Nissan GTR with 660 brake and we were on a clear autobahn yeah it was quite late we were just sort of like the evening it was was quite late yeah dusk and we were just cruising down and then you came next to me and pulled away a little bit and I just Kept going. I think we may have swapped a few yeah, times, yeah. but we ended up doing 196 yeah. miles an hour, which was amazing. <laughs> and the thing that blew my mind is your car. I don't know if you still got it. You would, yeah, I still got it. it. Or have you still got it? What was the power? 444, four, 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 four. something like that. 444 four, four horsepower GTR with 660, like aerodynamics rules, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, like, it That's kicks out. Unbelievable. Ass. These, these two cars, we're, yeah, so we're on the autobahn, de restricted. And we just go for it, like one you follow might, the uh, you other. Can, you can put that footage in if you like. Um, yeah, yeah. We've if got, you've got it on got video. It, I'll, I'll... Yeah, yeah. We we've got it on um, on video. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. imagine we're watching it now, and we're yeah. <laughs> we're on the water autobahn, and yeah, we just yeah. go for it. And the GTR and the GT3 are like the same speed. Like, like there was nothing in it. Nothing. You weren't in pulling it. away. We weren't gaining. It was exactly the same. Which is you know with an extra two hundred horsepower, but a, you know a blunt face trying to move air. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. What did you think of Gumball? It's one of those things, man. It's I don't know. I, I'm glad I did it. Mm. I, w- I don't think I'd ever do it again yeah, because yeah. it's just it's just so stressful. And because you guys late nights, were you filming and creating content throughout yes. the trip? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So there's you know there's late nights and there's there's parties and there's just a lot of stuff that happens that the next morning you shouldn't be getting a car. <laughs> Like, no way. Yeah. And it just makes me think, like, oh, it's just it's just asking for trouble, isn't it? It's it's a mad one. Like, it's f- whenever anyone asks me about it, I'm like, it's a lot happens in a week. And yeah. it's it's just so difficult. If you create content, like whether it's shooting photos or making videos or whatever, or doing all of the above, 
and then you're driving 14 plus hours a day, kind of on motorways. And then you arrive at like 11 p.m. And then you have to eat some dinner, go and say hello to everyone and then go to bed yeah. and then do it all, all over again for a week. Like, it's not fun. <laughs> no, it really isn't. And, you know, by the second half of the week, it was, it was a chore. And then the last two days, because I was uh, driving with Ethan, Ethan had to fly back to go on holiday. I was driving the car solo. We arrived in uh, Bucharest. Yeah. And we were having a big dinner at, you know, at 10, 11 p.m. And at half 11, I had to drive back to Budapest because the car was being collected the next morning at 8 a.m. to be put on a trailer to be driven back to the UK. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember so that. I, I think I had maybe like half a beer, got my stuff and then left. And I drove through the mountains for nearly 10 hours. And it was like the most horrendous thing I've ever done in a car. It was horrible. I had to stop at the side of the road and sleep for 20 minutes. And my phone also didn't have any 4G. I didn't have yeah. any Wi-Fi. So the most stressful thing in the world was loading up the map from Bucharest to Budapest, bearing in mind it's 10 hour drive and just hoping that nothing fucks up and that there's no <laughs> diversions. So I had it there and I was just praying to God, please don't be diversions because I have no idea where I am and no idea how to get back. That, that part of that trip... I would never, ever do again. It was something I got back and people were like, oh, how was Romania and stuff? It was, it was doing it how we did it in really nice cars was so sketchy. Like, yeah. You hear, you heard about all these like black cars following people in the middle of yeah. nowhere. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. the roads are just trashed anyway. So you're like, well, yeah. what if I get a puncture? Like if I get a puncture, I'm in the mountains in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of one of the guys in our group had a gun pulled on him when we were in Bucharest. I've never Savage. We woke up the next day and left like eight AM. Oh yeah. And yeah, it was it was it's a crazy it's a crazy thing to do. I've got a lot of fond memories of the people from doing it, but I would never sign up to do something like that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also like there's certain people like you that, you know, I got on with and you know, I, I consider us friends, but there's other people there that we're from completely different worlds mm. and we will never be friends. And, you know, for me, forcing relationships and, you know, forcing friendships, it's, it's always been a struggle of mine. Like if, if I just know that I'm never going to be friends with someone, I, I just very rarely put in the effort. It's, it's a flaw. Like, I, I don't know why, but, but also, I, I just automatically, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, life's too short, but, um, yeah, you know, if if it was a bunch of like-minded people like me, I would have enjoyed it a hell of a lot more. Yeah. But there's there's people, you know, money isn't a thing for people, and we'll 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 never be on the same page. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I find all of those trips, you find like your little crew, and then you yeah. just travel. Like we travel a lot together, and you just find your group of people, and then you just plan your stuff so that you drive together. You there's no like everyone leaves at nine, and then you drive with random people all day like that. It's a nice idea at the start, but logistically it's basically it, it impossible. Doesn't work. It just yeah. doesn't work. And people will, will just stop randomly. And you're like, no, if we just stop randomly for four hours, we're never going to get there. Yeah, it's no good. It's no good, is it? <laughs> if you had to plan a road trip now, yeah, and what would be some like key things that you wanted to get in there? Like, What would a, a good road trip look like? Uh, for me, a good road trip looks like Cool old cars, no more than five grand, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Like-minded people, camping, you know, stopping off at rivers and just messing about in rivers. Uh, a nice European tour, you know, France, Germany, Austria. Mm. And just, just finding cool shit to do, man, and just being out in nature and... I don't know, you know, just having barbecues in nature and stuff like that. That That's what I like. I don't, I don't go for fancy restaurants and fancy hotels. Yeah. I'd like an Airbnb, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, occasionally, but yeah, camping and just, just, you know, being, being with the cars and just admiring and, you know, just, just being with them for what they are really. You know? Yeah. It's interesting. Lo loads of old cars are so charming. Um, I, one of the things that's come through from, from this podcast of talking to lots of people, we've asked everyone like what they enjoy about, you know, cars or road trips or whatever. And it's not, it's not the cars. Like it's nice having, 
being around cars that you like that that does add to it and it is the story but it's just it's just like getting your mates or a bunch of people maybe a mix of some people you've not met and then some mates and then just going and doing cool stuff and seeing cool things that's yeah yeah, yeah. all the stuff that matters like ideally yeah. don't break down too often <laughs> <laughs> but having the world's most expensive car or whatever doesn't necessarily doesn't make it any better it's just having no. your mates and yeah. going and seeing stuff and doing stuff that you couldn't do whether it's camping exactly, or whatever yeah. just yeah just just going exploring man i just love going exploring and just seeing you know places i've never been to mm. before and places i'll probably never go to but it's just you know just building that memory bank of oh shit yeah like three years ago we went up a mountain found a lake and we had an awesome time and spent the day there and and also when i go on road trips i like going in old cars because when you get back you just feel so proud yeah. that that car's made it and then you're you're even closer and it's it just it just cements that bond even more you do that in a new car it's like yeah of, of course it made it like yeah. it's brand new a perfect or example of that was when we did the snow tour together yes and you yeah. were in a focus rs and i was in yeah. my old 911 and i've been on a few trips like that since or a couple of versions of the same in different cars and it none of them have I come back with as much of like awesome experience as doing it in the old car because genuinely yeah. you're like, I might die and it may not work. It's probably going to work, but it may not work. Whereas when you just fire up your modern anything, you just focus RS, focus RS. <laughs> <laughs> you just get in. But yeah. You must've been super proud of that car. I was. When you got back. There's, there's a few standout sketchy moments. One, I think we were we were traveling at night and it was like minus 25 outside and the the carburetors were starting to freeze open. Jeez. So basically the throttle was just like sticking. So that, that was interesting. And then there was one point where we were coming up to a massive, like big cross junction type thing. There wasn't really anyone around. And I touched the brakes and just nothing happened. I think they just like, Christ. everything had just got super, super, super cold and wasn't working. So you're there like, yeah. and probably got snow in it and whatever. Like those sorts of moments, you really. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You appreciate when a car works even more when it is working. You appreciate, but <laughs> you get out of even like an hour long drive and you've had the best time or yeah. you've had a memorable time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Totally, totally. Oh, it's, speaking about memorable experiences, I saw, did you do a Ford KA endurance race? Yes, yeah, I, did, uh, I was in the season last year with my colleague Matt. Did you do the full season? Yeah, I did the full season. How was yeah. that? It's amazing, proper grassroots, you know, cheapest most sport that you can get into. And it's amazing what these little cars will do. Again, it just it's testament of, you know, if you give a car a chance, it will surprise you. And these cars yeah. really did surprise us. They, they were crashed, they were rolled, and, you know, they just kept on going. Uh, in one race, we needed to swap an engine out. In another race, we had to... I swap a gearbox in another race we got completely shunted at the back and the the rear torsion beam was completely out of whack like completely and we had to straighten it and the car was finished the race with one wheel like that <laughs> it was it was incredible but it was for me it was great because I've I've you know always had the dream of racing and this was a, a really easy way to get into it yeah but yeah the, the field was really close but you know the further down the season some cars started to really pull away. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what was going on there, but I don't. I don't know if they quite had that sixty-nine horsepower that we all started out with. Yeah, that sixty ninety-six horsepower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I yeah. did. I, but no, it was, it was so much fun. I've done something similar, which is I've raced the Citroen C One endurance stuff. I've yeah. done some of the twenty-four hour races, and did Spa last year and spectacularly wrote off the car which was not oh, wow. not fun um <laughs> came off a blanchiment in the wet and straight oh into a wall the Christ. car the, the guys that won got disqualified for cheating ah, and you're interesting. like they, they'd basically remapped their engine yeah and they fair. got done at the end and you're like i don't understand why yeah, it, gets, you bother. it gets very very serious and very competitive and uh, i think one of the races that was won by you know, an ex Le Mans 24 hour winner. And you're like, oh, of course, of course they're going to do really well. But there were some cars, like I said, that were noticeably faster and there were lots of rumors, but you know. It's, it's amazing the level of driver actually you get at these events. 
Like yeah. a Citroen C1 or a Ford KA, you don't necessarily think like, oh, okay. And then you look at the grid and you're like, hang on, this guy races GT3 Porsches. This guy's been to Le Mans four times. There's like, yeah, there's just yeah, this yeah. field of actually ridiculous drivers. It's mental. It really is. Yeah. And it's just testament, you know, even if you drive the most impressive supercars uh, or race the most impressive supercars, you're always going to have fun in a little shitbox, yeah. aren't you? And it's it's totally changed how I approach like some cars. Now, if I see a Citroen C1 around town, I'm like, ooh, yeah. Yeah. I, like I get that. that with Ford KAs. Yeah. yeah. All the time. All the time. <laughs> and then all this, like I've raised some fast stuff and I come back and go, okay, well, I spent a tenth of the price or something racing a Citroen and I prob and I had a lot more fun, like a yeah. lot more fun. You're like, okay, well, what's the point? What's the point in racing all this crazy expensive fast stuff? Fuck this shit. Yeah, exactly. Give me a Ford KO. Go cheap, go cheap. And like, exactly. And it comes back to things like some of the projects you've done with cheap cars where I'm like, oh yeah, like build a track car for a couple of grand or whatever. Yeah. And then just go and beat it. Exactly. And if it breaks, it breaks. It breaks, it, it breaks. Like, yeah. If you smash a hundred thousand pound car into a wall, that hurts. Like, yeah, <laughs> you don't yeah. do that twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, if you know, if I were looking for a track car, I'd probably get. Um, well, I think I'd definitely get? get a Clio 172, Clio mm. 182. Strip it, put some good tires on it. Jobs are good, and don't think you need to do much more yeah. than that. You put a bucket seat in, and then and just have a whale of the time. Have a whale of the time, yeah. Or if you were going to get a real wheel drive car. If I were to get a rear-wheel drive car, I would probably get something like E46 BMW, mm. maybe a 330 Coupe. You can pick one of those up for, I don't know, two grand. Yeah. Strip it. You know, you'll save loads of weight. What sort of weight see. do you save by stripping out the seats and stuff? You could probably, with an E46, save 200 kilos straight off the bat. That's so much. That's 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 really before trying. Yeah, because those seats are really heavy, especially, you know, leather, electric, mm. all that. Take the dashboard out and stuff. I reckon you could strip, you know, 350kg out of a Ooh. E46 Ooh. quite easily, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're then you're in, like, a quick car. Then you're in a quick car, exactly, yeah. And then you, you've got, you know, a whole bunch of mods, cheap mods that you can do. And then, you know, four, four grand, you've probably got yourself, four or five grand, you've probably got yourself something that will be really quick. What's your go-to go faster other than... Be, become a better driver that's the standard one that gets fired back in, for, in forums yeah well go to go to mod is, it's got to be tyres isn't it yeah I think um, when we did our or when we've done pretty much every every car build on track it's been tyres I think have made the biggest difference mm. and then I think tyres and weight make the biggest difference but then with that you know you need to have a bit of safety because yeah. the car's going to be way easier to fling about and you can get it wrong a lot more a lot more easily yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it seems seems like a good thing. There's a okay, another listener question. Sam Cooper ninety three said, if you were to rest a mod one car, what would it be? Resto mod one car, what would it be? Uh, well, I'd I'd like to do it with my E thirty four touring, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, just yeah, just probably something German, probably something rear wheel drive, something that's a bit of a boat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of stage of my life at the moment is. <laughs> I just want something comfortable, yeah. but something really cool. Because I used to drive around in a 140 BMW um, pound. So I used to drive around in a 140 pound BMW 330 Touring E46. Yeah. Great car. It was amazing, faultless. But I really, I, I never really looked, you know, turn around yeah. to look at it. And no one ever really gave a shit. And, you know, for me, that's not the point having a car. I want something that people look at and be like, oh, I appreciate that. That's yeah. cool. That's why I bought the E34. So, yeah. Uh, it gets loads of looks, which is cool. Um, and, you know, I just want to make it as good as it possibly can be. Yeah. Um, I haven't done anything to it yet. I've put some new wheels on it and I've taken all the headlining out and replaced that. But apart from that, no. Uh, I'd love to do the paint work at some point and get some coilovers on it. Keep it, you know, keep it fairly authentic, mm. but just make it more comfortable and just cooler. That's it. Just, I, I've gone through a stage in the, probably about the last year where I've gone... I want a comfy car to drive around in. Like I realized all my cars were quite serious in the like yes. driver. And they were all very similar in, in that aspect. And then I was like, what are you doing? Like you, you should have different experiences. Yes. Like have 100%. something comfy, yeah, yeah, something yeah. not comfy. So that's how I've ended up with an S4. 
I oh, fair enough. I, I, I actually love. I, I really, yeah. really do, do yeah. like it. Oh, one person asked, "Why did you work oh, for Car it, Throttle yeah. when you could work for Top Gear and stuff?" <laughs> oh, why do I work for Car Throttle? Well, I'm very proud of Car Throttle. I've helped build Car Throttle up for you know a big portion mm. of my life, and I, I love the freedom that I have working for Car Throttle. I love that if I think something's going to be a good idea, we'll try it out, even if someone someone says it probably won't be yeah. a good idea. But you know, I I like to prove people wrong, really, and usually I get it right. And, you know, the the direction of car throttle is ultimately down to a very select few people. Yeah. And if I want to try a shitbox series for a while, we'll do it. Yeah, and yeah. it's great. If it works, it works. You know, we haven't spent any budget really. And it's a learning curve. So I've had lots of learning curves. And I think, you know, we've built up an audience now that's very loyal and just loves the stuff we do. How so, many How many followers do you have on all the different platforms now? Oh God! On YouTube, it's two point seven eight million, roughly. I don't know. That's a fair maybe, few maybe, people. Don't, maybe don't check that. Uh, on Instagram, it's one point five million. On Facebook, it's I don't know over five million. That's a crazy number. So yeah, you know, we're looking at I don't know, ten million followers yeah, yeah. or so. It's it's quite yeah. It's, it's a really large number, but it's not an intimidating number because, like I said, m- you know, most of the people that follow us are like me. Yeah, they just. They just want to have fun. They just love cars. You know, they, they don't take themselves too seriously. So as long as I don't take myself seriously, I think I think we'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's the best thing about like YouTube as a platform. Like you said, you can do whatever you want to do. Like, yeah. You're not, no one is telling you, oh no, you've got to go and do this, 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 this. You're like, I'm going to do this. We've got a yeah. small group of people. We decide. And then if it works, it works. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Our audience exactly. are the ones yeah. that are telling us. I was sitting in I think it was last night watching some absolute rubbish on normal TV and then I was like why and then just decided to watch something else and all these programs let's say it's like ITV or BBC or whatever the way they come up with programs is there'll be a people a bunch of people in a room and go yeah. yes that's a good program that's a good program that's a good program here's your budget and then they decide what their audience likes the audience doesn't yeah. get to decide the audience just has to watch it. And they're like, oh, you know, at 8 p.m. on a Sunday evening, 5 million people tuned into this. It's like, well, yeah, okay. But if you'd given them the, the actual choice, maybe yeah. they would have watched something else. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, TV doesn't have a comment section, does it? No. Or TV doesn't have, you know, a poll that you can put in a video. So, yeah, I mean, TV ultimately is run by people who make decisions usually quite poorly. (laughs) Um, Whereas, whereas with, you know, with YouTube, if you want to try something tomorrow, you go do it tomorrow. If it doesn't work, try something else the next day. You know, you can be so fluid with whatever the fuck you're thinking. You just, you just go and do it. And like, it doesn't take long. And if it, if it bangs, it bangs. If not, move on. Exactly. And you can instantly test it, get straight up feedback uh, yeah. Do you, do you do you have to deal with a lot of hate? I mean, with that number of people, you must have to deal with a lot of bullshit comments. I find on YouTube actually, there's like I, I can't remember the last time that someone gave me shit. Oh, and if they awesome. do give me shit, what? I just said that's awesome. Yeah. No. Yeah. It is. It is really awesome. But if they do give me shit, then I'll call them out and I'll say, "Why are you giving me shit?" Or you know, I never ever get butt hurt. Or no. I'll just say, oh, "I'm sorry, you feel that way." You know, it's yeah, not. Yeah. This video isn't to everyone's taste. And then nine times out of ten, oh mate, really sorry, you know, I was just trying to get your attention. I love <laughs> I love your stuff. And that happens like day in, day out, and you know, you just you just know that they're just bullshitting or they're just trolling or whatever. Yeah. But hate very, very rarely. And, and something that I've noticed, especially in the last few weeks, especially with lockdown, is the amount of messages I'm getting on my own Instagram just saying, I love the videos that you're doing, you know, it's helping me get through XYZ. Mm. And you know, it, it's so easy to forget that the stuff that we're creating, like you included, everyone, it just, it helps people. Like if people are going through loads of bad shit at the moment yeah. or in their lives, they have depression, whatever, family issues, and us creating a 10-minute video is escapism for those people and it just changes people's minds. And yeah. it's so easy to like lose sight of that and just think you're doing it for entertainment. It's so much deeper than that. And that's uh, 
yeah, it, like like I said, it's it's easy to forget, but it's very important to remember. Yeah, it's a really cool thing about all of this. Is like the I find every now and then I'll get a, a message or a, you know someone will direct message me or something and be like just really appreciative of whatever there's some content yeah. and they're like no I really really enjoyed that thank you very much you're like you know what that actually makes it all like as yeah, you know 100%. as cliche as it sounds that makes it all worth it because like for the podcast at the moment they don't they don't really make any money but I love doing them and. I love that people are enjoying them and specifically in this time, like you said, like people are sitting at home with like nothing to do yeah. or, you know, lot, or, you know or not able been... to do stuff. Yeah. And it's a bit of entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like relief. And, you know, lots of people have been furloughed and, you know, that they're, they're a bit of a loss. So, you know, if we can cheer them up for a little while, even if it's 10 minutes, then yeah, hundred percent. It's worthwhile. Yeah. And if everyone does it, imagine all the footage that they could watch and spend all their furlough time just <laughs> watching YouTube videos and then never being yeah. sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I saw. I think that's one of the one of the great things that's that's come out of it. Is there's a lot of, for example, podcasts. I mean, it's good and slightly bad for me. Is there seems to be everyone suddenly started a podcast, which is is great because there's like. 15 new podcasts that everyone can listen to that are all producing great content. I'm like, oh damn, there's like 15 more people that people can listen to instead of me. But- 15 people you need to take out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's cool. There's a lot of stuff out there. Right. Yeah. I normally wrap these up with five questions. Are you ready? This sounds like you're not going to do it. No, I am. Totally. Okay. This, this is another normal time. This is another normal time. All right. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, do you have a most memorable driving trip or journey? Question one. Most memorable driving trip or journey? Jesus Christ, that's that's a very, very big question. Most memorable driving trip or journey? Um, I've done I've done a lot of really cool road trips, but I'll probably go go back to how old was I? Twenty? Uh, Maybe I think fifteen years ago. 20 years old with uh, Gareth and another friend. We did a, it was called Sukata Rally. It was a charity rally that we did from uh, London to Coba de Roca, which is the most westerly point in Europe mm. in Portugal, Spain. I don't know. But we did that in a Peugeot 405 estate that I used as a car to do my Domino's deliveries. Okay. And that car was called Paddy. And it had red racing stripes and we ran the car on nothing but vegetable oil throughout the whole journey. And it was just three young lads without a clue, just just going on an epic, epic road trip. And there was lots of camping and there was lots of getting drunk and sleeping in the car and, you know, getting told off by police and getting (laughs) lost and vomiting. And, you know, it's just... It's just one of those things like I, w- I would never be able to recreate because I just don't have the stamina. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was just such such an awesome time, you know, middle of uni where you had no worries whatsoever mm. except where are we going to get drunk? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. It, was, it was just amazing. It was like a really budget gumball, like really budget. But awesome fun. But awesome fun, yeah. And yeah, just all the places that we saw that, you know, like I said, we'd never get to see and just stopping off and just messing about and yeah. Yeah, uh, shitting in the sea, that was fun, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. You know, that's a story that we still that we still laugh about yeah, these yeah. days. And, you know, you, you, can't, you can't make stuff like that up. So. No, that's, that sounds pretty <laughs> good. That sounds like a, a great recipe for a road trip. I find there's some of these things that you've done, like I've done when I was younger or whatever. There's no way I would agree to them again. But yeah. at the time, I'm so glad I did. And like, that's one of the things when you get older, you're like, you just get a bit more sensible. And you're like, yeah, but that could be awful <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah. yeah why would i want to put my body through that yeah. but um but to anyone listening um i would 100 percent implore you buy a cheap car d- and and just go on a road trip you know forget going to ibiza or whatever getting airplane tickets in a shit hotel mm. just buy a shit car and then you know make your own adventure because those memories will last a lifetime your Ibiza bender will probably not. Yeah. And you'll probably come back with herpes. <laughs> From either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Next question. Five car garage, unlimited oh value. Oh my um, goodness. The caveat is it has to fit into your life fish. Okay. One of those would be a motorbike. Mm. The 
BMW R90. Never ridden it, but it just looks so awesome. What's a and BMW R90 look like? It's like a cafe racer. Oh, okay. It's yeah, just yeah. like the sexiest, sexiest bike ever. Before I even liked bikes, I loved that bike. Because you're and re- now, relatively new to biking, is that right? I'm, ver- I'm very new to biking. I passed in November, September, oh, yeah. October, November, something like that last year. And I've been I've been riding pretty much every single day awesome. since... So I've, I don't know, I've clocked up maybe 5,000 miles since October That's or so. That's good going. Because I commute into London and back on a, on various Honda bikes because they put me through the test. Nice. So yeah, BMW R9 T. I would have Phil, my V6 MX-5. I'll never sell Phil. Tell me a little bit about Phil. Phil looks very cool, actually, I have to say. Phil looks really cool now, yeah. So started life just as a standard 1.8, naturally aspirated, rusty as fuck. And over the course of four or five years... A lot's been done to it. It's now got a Jaguar V6 with 255 horsepower, nice. you know, limited slip diff. The interior has all been done. The paintwork has been completely redone as well. Master Soul Red, which I think is the prettiest modern color of any car. And I had to have it on that car. Mm. Uh, suspension, wheels, er- everything's been done. And that, for me, is pretty much my legacy. And also that car is part of the reason that Car Throttle is where it's at at the moment yeah. because it kicked it kicked off the build series for CT and it got so many followers and so much attention and every day I get messages from people saying I love Phil blah 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 that's cool it's it's mental that the impact that car's had on the MX5 and wider community is amazing so motorbike Phil I'd have an off-roader mm. Suzuki Jimny yes nice. I would have a Suzuki Jimny I love Suzuki Jimny's so I'd probably have a new Suzuki Jimny then I would also have what colour my oh what colour lime green the like because why not yeah why not if it's a Jimny it's got to be that colour exactly <laughs> I would also have probably my E34 Touring you know if I could get that to a really nice spec mm. I'd love that and so I've got estate I've got sports car got bike uh, Jimny off-roader classic maybe nah nah maybe a van like a van I just like I just like moving shit yeah yeah you know <laughs> I, I just want I just want to have a garage where I've got all covers based oh sorry I just want to have a garage where I've got all bases covered yeah yeah so like because sometimes you need a van don't you you do it's like where do I get a van from oh on my driveway sweet yeah if you need so, to take an engine somewhere you don't really want to put it in the back of your car no, I don't want to put it in, in my MX-5, do I? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I probably have um, like a, a VW Transporter or so. Yeah. Um, a bit of an older one with the 2.5 TDI engines because they, they're really banging. I love those. Nice. So my five-car garage would probably be cost no more than <laughs> 20 grand. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great because then you're not yeah. like oh i need to earn 50 million in the next my lifetime to exactly to tick all the boxes yeah 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 so i'm already three three down effectively yeah. or two down i've got two out of five yeah just need to uh, make a bit more money and then i can get do more. you have do you have space for more cars uh currently no um I, well at my house there are currently seven cars <laughs> So, uh, no, I have no space because most of the cars are CT cars yeah. that we've got for videos. We've, I've got the the Vox, uh, Vauxhall Amiga Ute. I've got a 106 that I spent 24 hours in. That was disgusting. Uh, Honda Civic that I paid 50 quid for. But that's, Wait, did you like live in it for 24 hours? Yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah, I did that recently. <laughs> it was a challenge that we, well, I set myself or Ethan set me years ago and I was at a stage in my life where I was like, yeah, really good idea. Let's do it. Never got round to it. And then recently we were like, shit, we need to do a video. Why don't you try that living in a car for 24 hours? I was like, ah, different stage in my life, but let's do it for a video. And then, yeah. you know, it gets to a point where you're in the car, all the cameras are off and you're like, why the fuck am I in this car? <laughs> like literally no one would know if I got out and I slept on the sofa, but and, and also, it also wasn't a challenge that I set myself, so I wasn't yeah. trying to prove anything to myself. But yeah, I just stayed in that car like a good boy for 24 hours, and it was horrible. It was disgusting. Like, there's there's no point. I didn't achieve anything. Yeah. I just I just pissed myself off, but for whatever reason, I did it, because I'm an idiot. Fair play. It sort of reminds me of those, um, I feel like a few years, a few years back, people at like unis were 
like you could win a car, but you had to be the last person to touch yes. it. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with that. I just can't be asked. There's more important things in life than getting a free For car. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you could drive one car, you can drive one car for the rest of your life and you're allowed like, for most people, this wouldn't, this would put them off. If I said you're only allowed a 500 pound banger on the side, you'd be like, oh, oh yeah, I've got a two car garage. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. I'm well up for that. So you, because- you can have one car that's any value and yeah. a car that's 500 pounds. Oh, Okay. One car of any value. I, I do really love driving my MX-5. Mm. It always puts a smile on my face and it always puts a smile on everyone else's face. So boring answer, MX-5. Yeah. It's going to be the one that I'll stick Fair with enough. for life. And 500 quid car, it would it would have to be some sort of rear wheel drive estate. <sighs> oh, oh. Do, I do like an Octavia estate. A diesel Octavia, that's a bit of me. So I'd probably go for something like that because it's super reliable, very unassuming yeah. and you can just chuck anything in the back and you get massive MPG from the diesels yeah. uh, and they're bulletproof. And I've got a lot, lot of time for old diesels. I saw a bit of like random newsy stuff today. That was um, the Americans had run the fuel cycle or whatever on the new Bentayga hybrid. And on the motorway, <laughs> the Bentayga hybrid is less efficient than the V8. <laughs> Oh, wow, really? <laughs> really. Wow. It gets like 21 MPG and the V8 gets like 24. Jesus, that's And in impressive. town, it's like one MPG better. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, is what that is the point? That, is that because all the hybrid stuff's really heavy? Yeah, I think so. And like Christ. piddly. Yeah, that's, no, that's that's pretty stupid. Yeah, the whole hybrid thing at the moment, I don't know. It's uh, Either go electric or just stick with petrol because petrol engines are so clean and efficient these days. Yeah. Like this, uh, this halfway house, I don't, I don't think it's worth anyone's time. I can see how a small system, and it, the thing is, it has to be light. A small system that boosts low down sort of torque, but also does that naught to thirty when you're going away from a set of lights, so that it gets you up to speed, and then the petrol can take over. I can, I can see how a bit. I think that's sort of how a Prius works. Yeah, like that actually works quite well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I suppose it does, but then, but are you who wants really to be plugging their get... car in? Yeah, yeah, like plugging hybrids. No, my girlfriend's sister and her husband have bought a Golf. Is it the Golf E, which is a plug-in hybrid? Is it some GTE or something? Yeah, GTE exactly. And they live in a flat. They have nowhere to plug it in. Yeah, they just drive it as a petrol car. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is that is my problem with. I I would like to have a small electric town car vehicle type thing if if that worked, but I can't plug in. Get a motorbike. So it's completely pointless. Yeah, but I, yeah. I also just don't need to Fair. get around town Fair. that often. I, I just walk. Right. Next question. What's the most undervalued car at the, at moment? the moment? What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? That's cheap. Uh, that should be more. Uh, and I, I don't think you can say your MX5. No, because that's really expensive, actually. Uh, <laughs> cheap car that should be more. I I would say that the Alpine A110, that mm. could have a bigger price tag on it because that, for me, is the best new car that I've driven in a long time. It's, it's I think, one of very few cars that I've got into and I've just thought, fuck, there is nothing I would change about this. You feel completely dialed into yeah. it. It feels light. It feels nimble. The steering is amazing. Okay, it's got an automatic gearbox, but it's so good. And it, you just feel so at one with that car. And I don't think you can put a price on that kind of feeling in a car. So they could charge what the fuck mm. they like for that because it is literally the best thing. It's it's so awesome. I've not. Dri- I've still not, <coughs> not it's, driven yeah, one so yet. Good, so good. Um, you have to give it a go. I, and I yeah, hear good things. It's mega. Mega mega car. Yeah, I had uh, Dan Prosser on at one bit. One bit oh, doesn't he, he have one? He just collected his. Yeah, yeah, he he still has one, I think. And it was it's his like daily. It's well, it's his one car. But yeah, no, they they are very very cool. Right, final yes. question. What? I've said yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. What is the most interesting car to you at the moment? What are you googling? What are you looking up? What are you reading about? What videos most are you watching? Interesting cars at the moment. 
I'll be completely honest. I don't really, I don't really look at a lot of new cars. Well, maybe, maybe the mm. one that's interested me most is a Honda E, because that right. is just so quirky, and I'll never forget seeing Johnny Smith's video of it. And have you seen the turning circle on that oh, thing? I'm just, I'm just looking at this thing now. I've not really seen it. It's, it's yeah, a cool little, little electric thing. thing from Honda, and the turning circle on that is yeah. out of this world. <laughs> it's like the best thing and the interior is just so minimalist and so natural and it's just it's it's a great car for me that's one of a very few new cars that excites me the other new yeah oh, wow. the other new cars that excite me are the alpine a10 and the and the suzuki yeah. jimny and these are you know these are a few years old already but the yeah honda is so this, cool this has got like mercedes vibes going on but like turned up to 11 <laughs> with all these it's screens great, isn't it? it's so cool such wow. a dinky little honest thing and it's you know really economical it's really light and it, it looks so cool that's it i think with all these electric cars like you know an electric suv yeah what's the point it weighs like four thousand tons and gets in actual reality like 30 mpg <laughs> but this but the small highly designed cool yeah. little cars yeah. like that I, yeah i'd have one of them 100 percent, yeah well, it looks yeah, great. really cool and yeah the press have gone wild for it and it's, it's just so quirky and it's just so refreshing to see a manufacturer build something that we all want you know yeah there's so many like yeah, 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 yeah cars at the moment you just look at they're all just like blend into one not particularly exactly. interesting yeah and then the performance ones just have like more power, still not yeah, particularly yeah. interesting. But that is, that is cool. I would have that. Yeah, that's a cool little thing. I'm going to go and watch yeah. watch a video and we'll maybe find one yeah, of Johnny's. Well, thanks very much for... for well, thanks very much for having me. It's my first time. So yeah, I hope I'm not pregnant now. <laughs> we're good we're we're very far away so you never know <laughs> hey, all probably right, yeah. all right well i'll take a test anyway and i'll let you know but um no it's been good fun thank okay. you very much for the interesting questions and the good chat cool thanks very much all right cheers